This morning, as part of our Black History Month coverage, we are looking at how racism hurts the economy and affects all Americans. Author and economic policy analyst Heather McGee explores this. In her new book, it's called The Sum of Us, What Racism Costs Everyone and How We Can Prosper Together. We took a look at what this actually means for Americans' wallets. The wage gap between white and black Americans has widened in the past 20 years to roughly $33,000 per household, and we all pay a price for it. McKinsey and Company, for example, predicts that the wealth gap will drain at least a trillion dollars out of the U.S. economy annually over the next decade. And that translates into a loss of $2,800 or more for every American. Heather McGee is an author and economic policy analyst who traveled across the country investigating the ways racism hurts more than just people of color. At an auto factory in Mississippi, for instance, she found workers trying to organize into a union to get higher pay, health coverage, and a pension. But one white worker told her if black employees were in favor, they would be against it. Another believed that if you help black people succeed, you're pushing down white people. In the end, McGee says the union vote failed, and so did the push for a better deal for all. And Heather McGee joins us now. Heather, good morning to you. This book is a tremendous accomplishment, and there's one line in particular that I love. You say that wealth is where history shows up in your wallet. But the costs of this racism for all of us go beyond just the money in our wallets. So I was hoping you could give us some additional examples. I love in particular the one of the swimming pool. Yeah. You know, I, I wrote this book to figure out why it is that we sort of can't seem to have nice things in this country. And one of those nice things is the public swimming pools. We used to have nearly 2,000 in America. And I traveled to one of the many towns in the country that drained their public swimming pool because it was segregated. And when the civil rights movement allowed black Americans to say, hey, we pay for that pool, too, let us swim, too, instead of integrating it, they drained it. Of course, that meant that communities, all communities, lost out. And in many ways, it feels like America has done that time and time again, that we've had this ambivalence about sharing our nation across lines of race. And so it's cost us all economically. How do you think American life would look and feel differently if our politics were not so divided by race, if people were all voting as a, a different kind of economic bloc? That's such a good question. You know, I think about issues like the debt for diploma system that we currently have, right, a trillion and a half dollars in student loan debt. To see what it'd be like if we voted differently, if we were in more solidarity with one another, you just have to look back to the period of time when government used to pay basically full freight for people to go to college. Of course, that was when the majority of the college-going population overwhelmingly were white, and we've shifted to this student debt system as the country has had more students of color going to college. That's just one example of where racism has a cost for everyone. I know. Heather, you really, you really did your homework in terms of how you travel the country. It seemed like you were trying to connect the dots. One thing that stood out to me was white high school dropouts have a higher average of income, household wealth, than black people who have graduated from college. I thought, how in the world could that possibly be true? And you talked to everyday people, you said, and experts to connect the dots on racism. That's right. I mean, what we don't know so often in this country is how much the formula that built the great American middle class is one that we've walked away from since the civil rights movement. But it was full of what we now sort of deride as free stuff, free grants to college, subsidized housing. And most of that was exclusive, was whites only, was segregated. And it was when we had to sort of integrate the pool, not just the public swimming pool, but the pool of resources that 
we drained them. And now you've got most American families struggling to make ends meet. Before the pandemic, 40 percent of workers weren't making enough to make ends meet. Not everybody that does a book gets to talk to their mom, but your mom is, is Dr. Christopher. <laughs> She's an expert in public health and social policy. And one of the questions that you asked in the book is, who are we as an American and who are we to each other? Hmm. I love this question because I'm very curious about what the answer is to the question. You know, my mom is the, the creator of a framework for a process that I think could bring this country together. It's called Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation. It's happening all over the country. I visited with folks in Dallas who are doing it. And it takes stakeholders together, business leaders, people in public libraries, community leaders, and says, what is the vision we want for this country? Ours is the world's grandest experiment in a multiracial democracy. There's someone in this country with a tie to every single community on the globe. And when we link arms together across race, when we lean into diversity as our superpower, mm -hmm. I truly believe, and writing this book has made me more convinced, there is nothing our country can't do. Diversity is superpower, I Tony. Know, it's I a great like line. that. And for that yeah. reason, it really is a book for all Americans. Heather McGee, thank you very much for coming on to talk about it. The book is called The Sum of Us, What Racism Costs Everyone and How we can prosper together, and it goes on sale tomorrow.